Hi everyone, my name is Paula Castaño. I'm a native species manager with Island Conservation, and I'm currently based in Chile. However, I have been involved in efforts in working in the Galapagos for the last eight years. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about some of the restoration efforts that we are being implemented in the Galapagos with support of Galapagos Conservation Trust and in partnership with the Galapagos National Park and others like Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust. When we are gonna be talking tonight about restoration efforts, I'm actually gonna be focusing on how we are bringing birds back from the brink of extinction. But before we get into how we are restoring these islands and how we are potentially bringing birds back from the brink of extinction, I wanted to focus and bring your attention to why islands and why we choose to work on islands. So islands represent only the 5% of the earth land mass However, 19% of avian biodiversity can be found on islands. 41% of all endangered terrestrial vertebrates are found on islands. And since the 1500s, 75% of all extinctions have occurred on islands in 86% of the cases because of invasive species. So you can see what is the greatest impact that we can have for biodiversity conservation when we are focusing and working on islands in these very unique locations like the Galapagos. And so you will be starting thinking, okay, so what we can do to prevent these extinctions and for preventing that these ecosystems and functions are lost forever. Well, there are efforts of restoration and rewilding that can be implemented on these islands. When we are restoring islands, we are looking to remove these invasive species that are the threats, and then letting the ecosystem to restore by itself, or why not helping them by bringing a species that are no longer present on those ecosystems to restore the ecosystem function, but also to bring back these species and not lose them forever. And so in the Galapagos, we have a great example of this effort. It's actually Pinson Island Restoration. Pinson Island is an island where in uh, 2012, invasive rodents were removed successfully. And after that, over the last decade, we have seen remarkable changes on the island of restoration. So we have put a species like the vermilion flycatcher, uh, which was present at that time, but actually the population is even healthier now. We have the healthiest population of these species in the entire archipelago, just living on Pinson Island. In addition to that, we also have a very healthy population of Galapagos hawks, which is a very unique population from Pinson Island. They are very uh, doing very well. They are thriving and reproducing and also uh, having, having their role as a top predator, controlling the other species and maintaining the balance of this ecosystem. But I want you to focus also on two of the species that we have in the center, which are the Pactus finch and the Galapagos ray. The story of these birds are very uh, unique and very interesting. And it shows you like the efforts and what it takes and why, when you remove these invasive species from these locations, how the island can restore in itself and can bring you back the species that were never thought to be present or could potentially be present on that island. For example, for the cactus finch, uh, the last records of this species was in the early 1900s. Afterwards, we didn't saw any of those. And then in 2019, we started seeing individuals coming back to the island and establishing on the island. The same case is, for example, for the Galapagos Trail. This one is very interesting because you, everyone before we saw Galapagos Trail on Pinzon, they said there was no possible that there were no possibility that this species could be ever present on that island because it didn't have any habitat for it. Because when you are looking for this species where it's located in other islands, for example, in Santa Cruz, Santiago, San Cristobal, it's always found in very high humid areas. And so there was no way possible they will have habitat in, Pin in Pinzon for this species. Well, the species prove us wrong. There is actually habitat for them because now we have a very healthy population and they are right by themselves. We didn't have to help them. Uh, this is a species that usually is known for not flying that much, but actually it got by itself to Pinson and now the population is doing pretty well. So these examples are something, uh, great examples of what we can see when we are restoring islands. Even though we are focusing here on birds, there is other species and ecosystem functions that are recovering as well. But we didn't want, for example, in this case, 
to leave the island just restoring by itself. We actually wanted to support the island and bring back a species that was no longer present. So this is the case of the woodpecker finches. Woodpecker finches were a species that used to be present on Pinson Island. We have records of the California Academy of Science during those expeditions that they did in the early 1900s and late 1800s, where individuals were collected on Pinson and it looked like there was an established and breeding population. By the 1980s, the population was kind of rare and there was not really a lot of breeding happening. And the last record that we have of this species, one sighting was in 2012 of only one individual. After that, we haven't seen the species. So we thought with the Galapagos National Park and other partners and with support of Galapagos Conservation Trust and Rewild, uh, why not bring this species back to that island? Why not help uh, continue the restoration of Pinson Island, but at the same time, take this as an opportunity to build protocols and understandings of how we can do reintroduction of songbirds in the Galapagos for future projects by the Floriana Island, but also other species like the uh, mangrove finch, which is a critically endangered species. And so we decided that in June and July this year, we went ahead with the translocation of 23 individuals to the island of Pinson. Before we were able to translocate these individuals, they were captured on Santa Cruz Island. That was our source population. They were brought in captivity for a couple of days. Uh, during this time, uh, they were treated for internal parasites, but also they have enough time for their guts to be clear because we wanted to make sure that we were not bringing any insects that they would be potentially eating and that could not be present on Pinson to Pinson Island because they were from Santa Cruz. So we don't want at the same time to be translocating other things that potentially can be harming the island that we want to be continuing to restore. And so we successfully were able to house these individuals in captivity. This is very remarkable because it's the first time it has been done successfully. And for this, we implemented protocols that we developed in a previous project uh, when we were looking to determine how we can have in captive holding five species of Darwin finches on Floriana Island. The protocols that we developed at that time proved to be very successful with this because we didn't have any mortality during the period of time that these birds were in captivity. Once they were in captivity, they were translocated to Pinson Island and we fit them with transmitters on their backs uh, that, used to be, uh, that they were for tracking them while they were on the island and identifying if they were staying or they were moving. And so you should know, and like you will be thinking, okay, well, they are birds, so they can fly. So there is always a greatest potential that the birds are going to be moving to other islands as well. And maybe not staying where you want to be or want them to be staying. There's also a potential that they are kind of like missing their homes and they want to go back and things like that. And so we were monitoring Santa Cruz Island to be able to determine if the population or some of these individuals were going back to that island as well. Because when we were doing the monitoring on Pinzon, we monitored them and we start seeing that by day five, we were not finding the birds. And so we're like, okay, maybe they are going back to Santa Cruz Island. Well, they are not on Santa Cruz Island either. So, okay, so maybe they are going somewhere else. And so in here, you can see in this picture, the closest to us is actually Pinzon Island uh, with the habitat where they were released. Uh, in, the, in the far end, you have Ravida right in front of us. And back in behind that, you have a bigger island, which is Santiago Island. And so we thought, well, uh, they can see the island. Potentially, they can just be flying there. And so we decided to spawn a monitoring. And yes, indeed, we found two individuals over release on Pinson Island on Rabbit Island. And we saw that they were doing well. So with this in mind, what I want you to understand is that we cannot even say, like, for example, if we stop seeing it then five days after we released it, or if we saw it on, San, on Rabbit Island, we cannot say that the effort was successful or unsuccessful. This is in early stages, I feel, and what we are seeing is greater information for the planning of subsequent uh, reintroductions of these species on that island, but also for the future of other reintroductions in the Galapagos of some birds. And so the next stages that we have is actually in November, we have a trip to Princeton and Rabida. We are gonna be monitoring for these species and other ones in the environment. 
But also in earlier next year, when it's the breeding season, we are going to be monitoring the species as well. We want to identify the potentially being established in any uh, nesting areas. Are they returning to Pinzon? Are they maybe on Santa Cruz? And, it potent, and how we can be implementing subsequent uh, translocations so we can uh, make this effort successful for the long term. So with these results, what we are looking to do and what I've been telling you, we are not gonna be only restoring things on island. We are looking to pave the way for future restoration efforts and reintroduction efforts in the archipelago. One of those examples is actually Floriana Island. This is one of the islands that uh, the Galapagos National Park with other partners, including Island Conservation and for which Galapagos Conservation Trust is a great partner as well. Uh, we are looking to remove invasive predators from this island. It's an inhabited island, will be the largest inhabited island from that where that is going to be done uh, in 2023. But what it's going to be given once we are able to remove these invasive predators is an opportunity to reintroduce at least 12 species are, that are no longer present that are locally seen on the island, and 10 of those are actually birds. And four of those birds are actually. Uh, Darwin finches. And so we will have raptors in between uh, some of the individuals that we are going to be releasing. We have Galapagos rails and other species. And so what we are learning from this opportunity from uh, Pinzon is actually how we can develop these protocols, how we can continue to have this implement and see what is happening, what is working, what is not working, and how we can actually uh, improve the odds of these reintroductions to be successful into the future. And so I wanna thank all of you uh, for your support. Without you, we would not be here and doing the amazing job that we are able to do in this amazing uh, location in islands. And I wanna thank Galapagos Conservation Trust for the opportunity to talk with you tonight, but also to another founder, Green Wild, who supported this effort and our long-term partner, the Galapagos National Park. So thank you all for your support. And I hope you enjoyed tonight uh, the rest of the talks. And if you have any questions in the future, please let us know. We will be happy to answer any questions. Okay,